This video will discuss spin integration of integrals in restricted Hartree Fock. So we mentioned in some previous videos that we have the energy of our ground state determinant, which is going to be equal to the sum over all electrons, I equals one to N, of the core Hamiltonian energy or the core energy of that electron, its kinetic energy plus its attraction to all the nuclei, plus a pairwise sum over all pairs of electrons, I equals one to N, J equals I plus one to N, of the interaction energy or the pair energy of those two electrons. So we saw from the one electron integrals video that this core energy of an electron is this Dirac notation integral, which is going to be the integral over its X, Y, Z and spin coordinates of its spin orbital, uh, chi star I times chi I, where we have this core Hamiltonian, this core Hamiltonian operator acting on our spin orbital and complex conjugate over here. So where this one electron core Hamiltonian operator is its kinetic energy operator, negative one half del squared one, minus sum over all the nuclei, A equals one to M, of the charge of that nucleus in number of protons, ZA over R1A, how far the electron is from that nucleus. And note that these, these uh, variables that we're integrating over, the dx1, that's going to be dr1 d omega1, where r is the x, y, and z coordinates, the spatial coordinates, and omega is the spin coordinate, whether it is alpha or beta. So the, and the dr1 would be dx1, dy1, dz1. Okay, but this is focusing on spin and we're dealing with all these integrals and all these integrals have spin in them because spin is in this uh, variable. But in restricted Hartree-Fock, we can do some approximations and deal with spin and end up with some, uh, end up with some formulas which simplify quite a bit what we need to do in order to calculate what the Hartree-Fock energy of our system is gonna end up being. Okay, so I mentioned that our spin orbital can either be spin up or spin down for a given spatial orbital, where we have, for example, the eyes here uh, would be like for the spin orbital going from one to n minus one for, for alpha for spin up and for spin down going from two to n going every other. So first of all, for the one electron integrals, if we have this integral i h one j, so then if we split out the spin orbital into its spatial and spin parts, we have the spin coordinate and the spatial coordinates separated. And notice that there's nothing inside of this core Hamiltonian operator that depends on spin. Charge of the, charge of the nucleus, distance from the nucleus, uh, derivatives with respect to spatial coordinates, none of these depend on spin. So we can actually take this spin expression here and we can factor it out um, from what we originally had. So we can make this a separate integral of spin and an integral of space. So once we factor that out, we get d omega one, sigma star i, sigma j. So we get what's the complex conjugate of the spin function in uh, orbital i, and what's, the and what's the spin function in spin orbital j. And then we have uh, the integral of the spatial function, which is going to remain. So what we represent this as is for the spin part, we note that the spin functions are orthonormal. So if these are both alpha, it's gonna be one. If they're both beta, it's gonna be one. If they're alpha, one is alpha and the other is beta, it's gonna be zero. So we can represent that as a Kronecker delta, where if they're the same, you're gonna get one. And if these two are different, then you're gonna get zero. And then for this integral, which we have left over, where we've taken that d original Dirac notation integral and we factored out the spin part, what we're left over with is the spatial part. So the way we distinguish between spin integrals and spatial integrals is for the brackets, instead of having this uh, less than greater than sign for the outsides, those are just going to have regular parentheses. So if you see parentheses around a, a Dirac notation integral, then that means that that is a spatial integral only. 
All right, so what does this mean for our specific kind of um, core Hamiltonian energy for our one electron operators? So HI, we noted, was the Dirac notation integral I H1I. So I and J are always the same as far as these are concerned. So this gives us the Kronecker delta of sigma I and sigma I. And, you know, reflexive property, if they're both sigma I, they always have to be equal. So that means this Kronecker delta is always going to be 1. So in fact, spin doesn't matter at all for our core energy of our electrons, our kinetic plus nuclear attraction energy. So for every electron, it's just going to be the spatial part that matters, where the spatial part was just this integral that we have indicated up there. Okay, so for one electron integrals, we're set. Spin doesn't matter. Continue on as if everything was the same. What about for two electron integrals? So if I start out in chemist notation, I do uh, this uh, square bracket, IJKL. That's going to be the integral over the spin coordinates for electron 1, spin coordinates for electron 2, and then spatial coordinates for electron 1 and 2. I can't factor those out because my operator depends on both the spatial coordinates of 1 and the spatial coordinates of 2. So this integral stays as 1. But just as I did down here, um, the spin part isn't in the 1 over r12 operator. It doesn't depend on spin, so I can factor both of those out into independent integrals. And just as I did over here, um, you have to have both sides of the spin integral being equal in order for it to be non-zero. And it's 1 if they're the same, so you get a Kronecker delta for the spin of i and j. You get a Kronecker delta for the spin of k and l. So the complex conjugate and regular for electron 1 must be, the same, must be the same, and the complex conjugate spin and the regular spin for electron 2 have to be the same for whatever spin orbitals they're in in each case. All right, so that leaves us with two Kronecker deltas and then a spatial integral that is left over for our two electron integral, indicated with the parentheses notation. All right, so the two types of integrals that we get, as mentioned in the video on two electron integrals, we get a Coulomb integral, the classical electron, the classical electrostatic repulsion of an electron in or spin orbital i and spin orbital j. So in this case, um, i and i, those spins are going to be equal in the same spin orbital. Spins are going to be the same in, when they're both in spin orbital j, so these both are always 1. So for Coulomb integrals, you are always going to get a spin integration of 1, and you're just left over with the spatial integral. And then alternatively for our exchange integral, where for the non-complex conjugate side, we're exchanging uh, electron 1 and electron 2 for what those are in. So if we, I believe it's this i and this j that are being exchanged. Um, I believe it would be this one here and that one there for what orbital is being switched. So now what we get in each case is that the spin of spin orbital i and spin orbital j has to be the same. Otherwise, these, uh, these integrals are going to go to 0. And in both cases, we just say delta sigma i, delta sigma j. Um, that's the same as this. Um, so, and 1 squared and 0 squared are both 0 and 1, so it's the same as just a single Kronecker delta. So what we have then is our total energy of our Hartree-Fock ground state determinant is going to be a sum from i equals 1 of our spatial core integrals plus a sum over all the pairs of electrons of the Coulomb integral minus the exchange integral if the spins of the two electrons are the same or it's going to be zero if they're not. So two electrons that have the same spin will interact through a Coulomb and exchange integral and two electrons of different spin will only interact through the Coulomb integral where they, their exchange interaction is going to be zero.